webinar is starting. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Capitola Planning Commission meeting of July 20th. This meeting is open to the public with both in-person attendance at Capitola City Hall in the council chambers at 420 Capitola Avenue and remote attendance uh, possible. Uh, Planning Commission and staff are attending in person and remotely via Zoom. There are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting via Zoom and make public comment during the meeting is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, on the meeting agenda. Uh, the public can also live stream uh, the meeting on the city's website or on YouTube. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Spectrum Communications Cable TV Channel 8 in AT&T UVerse Channel 99 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Mondays and Fridays at 1 p.m. on Spectrum Channel 71 and Spectrum Channel 25. A recording of the meeting is also available on the city's website after the meeting. Uh, our technician tonight is Brian. And as a reminder, please turn off your cell phones. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll have a roll call. Chair Westman. Here. Vice Chair Christensen. Here. Commissioner Esty. Here. Commissioner Jensen. Here. Okay, now we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, uh, next we have new business. Uh, so we'll move on to, we have any new business? All right, we'll move on to oral communications. Um, in oral communications is an opportunity. This is a little different tonight. Oral communications is an opportunity for anyone to speak on an item that is not on our agenda. Uh, if you would like to speak to us on an item that's not going to be discussed tonight, you're welcome to come to the podium and you have three minutes. And seeing no one is anyone, we don't do Zoom for oral communications. Okay, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Sorry, my, as a reminder, <laughs> make sure your microphones are on. Um, one request is to remove 5A from the consent calendar for 201 Monterey um, Unit C. That's Castagnolis Deli. So we'll move that to the beginning of the agenda. Okay, we'll, we'll do that when we get to the consent calendar. Okay. Um, okay, are there any commission comments? staff comments? No additional staff comments. Okay, we'll move to the approval of the minutes for March 2nd and July, June 1, excuse me, for the planning commission. Uh, anybody have any corrections? Or? I move approval. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes for March 2nd and June 1st. Um, I think we can just all vote on this without debate. Is everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Carries unanimously. So now we're moving to the consent calendar, and we are going to uh, first remove one item from the consent cal calendar, and that's 201 Monterey Avenue. Um, that is um, the um, permit 
and conditional use permit for the sidewalk dining uh, at uh, the restaurant at that location. Okay, we have a motion. We're just moving it a little further down on the agenda. Yeah, it's still gonna. It's no, it's still gonna be tonight. It sh it'll just be under public comment, so you'll have an opportunity to comment on it. So um, why don't we move that item to, we'll call it A1, and deal with that first under the public hearing since we have someone here to speak on it. Is that everyone in consensus with that? Yep. yep. Okay, the other items that we have on the consent calendar is um, uh, 4610 Crystal Street, and it's a permit for a second story addition uh, and minor modification for the required covered parking dimensions. Uh, would anybody like to pull that item for discussion? Seeing no one, would anybody in the audience like to pull that item? Seeing no one, Mr. Lawrence? I'll, I'll motion to approve. Uh, this the consent or the item uh, address of 4610 Crystal Street, permit number 22-0396. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Very unanimous. So now we'll move to the public hearings, and our first public hearing is going to be um, the item that we removed from the consent calendar and that's the revocation of a conditional use permit for sidewalk dining at an existing restaurant, Castanaglo's uh, Deli and Cafe, loaded with, located within the mixed-use village zoning district. We have a staff presentation. Yeah, good evening, Chair Westman and commissioners. Uh, I have, actually have an update for you on this item. I was originally scheduled for a revocation hearing due to um, uh, an inability to lease payment for it and also get insurance information um, but the owner actually brought us a, uh, a check for the full amount that was owed yesterday and sent us an email today including the day of the insurance information so a uh, good outcome uh, we don't need to uh, continue with the revocation uh, but we we certainly don't want to end up in this situation again a lot of staff hours were ended on this situation to a hearing. Uh, it was a 10-month effort, uh, two departments involved in uh, communicating with the applicant and trying to get this uh, file uh, current. So um, we're going to be recommending a couple of conditions to be added to, to this sidewalk use permit. Um, and I've got them on the screen here. I'll just read them into the record for you. So number 27 would be that the community development director May revoke the sidewalk dining permit if payment in full is not received after 30 days of issuance of a notice of delinquency or if there is a lapse in providing public insurance coverage. The applicant may appeal the community development director's decision to revoke the permit within 10 day calendar days of the decision by providing the applicable form and fees per section 1.5. So this would just be a tool for us to not have to go through such a lengthy process. Uh, the applicant could still this item if they wanted to revoke the director's decision, uh, but it gives us a little bit more authority to move forward without so much process. And then the second one, uh, number 28, is so following any late payment, the owner applicant will be invoiced annually in the following billing cycle. After two successive timely annual payments, they would again be eligible for quarterly payment. So uh, they right now are late on a payment, so the next two years would save time and letters and the back and forth that goes with the payment and the time that it's due. Right. So that's our recommendation this evening, not to revoke, but to add two conditions to, uh, to the permit. So on the 28, the finance department already has a rule, a procedure where they will bill annually if, uh, let's see, lessees that remain delinquent after notification would bill annually rather than quarterly. So isn't that kind of the same as 28? 
It is. We, we have a little bit more authority because this is linked to a use permit, and so we wanted to put it in both places and also have the have the have there be a demonstrated performance with two successive payments in a row. All right, we'll open the public hearing on this item. Uh, if anyone's interested in speaking, please come up to the podium. Uh, you're welcome to sign your name if you want to make certain that we get it correct in the minutes. Uh, you have, there's a little button there to push on your mic. Oh, okay. My name's John McHenry. Uh, I live next to Castagnolas at 207 San Jose, uh, Monterey Avenue. Uh, it's been a really good neighbor, and I don't know if I can ask questions or not, but I'm wondering why he's getting charged to have those little sidewalk tables out there. Uh, Staff or money? Can... Well, I'll answer that quickly. Yeah. Everyone does. Uh, if you're using the public sidewalk, then you need to pay a fee to use the public sidewalk uh, for private business use. Okay, well, I'd like to say that it, I think it's crazy because... Uh, the small businesses, especially in this town during winter, uh, it, it's difficult to run a small business. And to charge him when he's had those tables there all these years with no problem whatsoever with the ingress and egress down Monterey Avenue, I don't understand it. My building uh, at 207 Monterey and the buildings that continue down Monterey are all uh, five feet from the gutter, from the curb, I'm sorry. And his building is 10 feet, six inches from the curb. Therefore, his little tables do not protrude beyond five feet. So I don't understand why he even has to get a permit to do this or pay a fee to do this. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for your comments. It is in the city's zoning ordinances. It is a law in the city of Capitola that he has to get a permit and pay the fee. And so as uh, the Planning Commission, it's our job to enforce what are the regulations that are on the city's books. Okay, so you, I'd have to go to the city council to ask them to change that. That's correct. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your You're welcome. time. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Seeing no one, I will bring it back to the commission. Would anyone like to start off? Anybody have any difficulty with the two conditions that staff would like to add? Uh, so um, I may need a little help here. So someone on Zoom is oh, wanting to sorry. speak. Someone on Zoom like to speak? We will allow John to speak. Please unmute yourself. Uh, hey guys, uh, I hope everyone's having a lovely evening. I'd just like to uh, agree with what John just said. I know this isn't really you guys, this is the city council, but chiseling our small business owners because we have made terrible economic choices over the last couple of decades and all we really have left is parking and basically making our small businesses uh, pay far more than they need to. Uh, this is a problem with many of the small businesses in town. And I'm not talking about like the parking issues where we try to like make them add spaces, even though we have like a empty lower parking lot right there. I'm really focused on how hard we make it for our small businesses to survive here. Uh, I've even heard they're opening a second pet store in the lower village. Do we really need two small like bougie pet stores there? Uh, again, not really your stuff, but uh, I would like to say at the end, I just want to make sure that uh, this business owner is not going to have this, like, um, I guess, apply to him retroactively. He will still be able to make quarterly payments until he misses another payment, uh, referring to number 28 there. And he's not going to have to make annual payments for the next two years. Uh, doing that in the year where the war failed and the worst winter for these businesses in maybe two to three decades is just... Uh, it's silly. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else on Zoom? No. Okay. All right. Now we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Um, 
everyone have any concerns about the fees and the different aspects? So I'm assuming that the motion we want to make is to modify the conditional use permit to add these two new conditions to this application. Correct. Okay. Anybody like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll move that we modify the uh, conditional use permit for, uh, shoot, the address is 201 Monterey? 201 Monterey. 201 Monterey, including the two, number 27 and 28 that we were using for that. I'll second. Okay, we have a second so um, we probably should do a roll call vote chair Westman uh, aye vice chair Christensen aye commissioner Esty aye commissioner Jensen aye okay so now we will move along to our regular item a which is 111 Capitola Avenue uh, and it is uh, Location two parking spaces in front of English Ale, uh, coastal development permit, a design permit, a major encroachment permit for a custom street dining deck uh, at 111 Capitola Avenue. Uh, is there a staff report? Yeah, thanks again. Uh, reintroducing this item as well. Uh, so, English Ales uh, in the Mixed Use Village has presented a, it's, it's really a mix of a custom dining deck and they've incorporated some prototype items, um, but by definition, uh, if you deviate with one standard, you have to go to a custom dining deck that requires a design permit and planning commission review. Um, this is the, the business frontage, uh, 111 Capitola Avenue, so it is two parking spaces and the primary focus of the proposal this this evening is to repurpose the existing planters in a slightly different format on what would be the permanent dining deck um, and it was a, this was originally rolled out during COVID and uh, the owner had uh, an issue with matching some paint and so the, the goal is to repaint as well to match the building and uh, so this is the site plan I'm going to use the pointer here for a moment and point a few things out Capitola Avenue on the left side and then the English Ales building on the right. Uh, the footprint of the deck is 42 feet in length by uh, this measurement is 8 to 6, but that actually includes the top of the ramp of the curb. So it's really about 8 feet wide. Uh, and then these one, two, three rectangles, these are the existing planters. They would be butted up and fastened to each other. And then one, two, three, four at the bottom. And then the gap that's left between those would be a wood paneling um, horizontal board with trim to match the, uh, the facade, the same fascia and facade as the planters. So it would look like a continuous uh, facade from the Capitola Avenue side. And then uh, there is a proposal here for a ramp and this ramp uh, projects onto the sidewalk on the back of the curb, one foot nine inches. And uh, the reason for this ramp is the slope from the gutter pan up to the crown of the road at this cross section of Capitola Avenue is particularly steep. And this ramp has to be meet accessibility sloping requirement. So to get the, the effective run uh, and the top out landing of a five foot five, uh, this run has to push out into the sidewalk. Uh, they, the, one of the concerns with this is uh, obviously pedestrians, but uh, there is a bit of cover in existing installments here with the tree, this palm tree uh, in the sidewalk, and then there's a city lamp post here. Uh, as well, there is uh, eight foot eight clear of the building for passage. Uh, the minimum requirement is five feet, so it meets the standard of the remainder. I'm going to show you a cross section of it. And so with the road crowning being so steep and having a flat deck, uh, this ramp needs to be a bit longer and project onto the sidewalk. So getting into just some of the other items, uh, prototype items that were selected were heaters and a rope and stanchion, which 
uh, extends along at the, the curb line of the deck. Custom items include the tables and chairs. Uh, these are black powder coated aluminum items. Uh, we've done a visual inspection of them and they, they look to be pretty durable and suitable for this use. Uh, the items that we are uh, recommending an alternate for uh, as staff is uh, the applicant has proposed a nine foot a residential grade umbrella with LED lights underneath and umbrella stands that are a bit blocky and worn and uh, can present a tripping hazard. Um, and with the spread of the umbrella, uh, this is going to overhang the eight foot deck in some way, like nine feet. So uh, that's also a concern. And then the introduction of a new light source with an LED. So um, the applicant has rolled some of this out this week. Uh, so we got a, a real life view of what it would look like, uh, assuming the deck was built. With this photo, I'm showing you the, uh, he's also pa painted the, um, the interior of the planters to match the building. Uh, the, before there was a bit of a lavender shade to the gray. And the, he's gonna paint the outside uh, if approved this evening. Uh, and then the photo on the right, uh, I went out and took some measurements. So back of curb, one foot nine, what does that look like? I'm projecting that up the uh, pedestrian path. So it falls just shy in the far tree well there. It's just shy of about the midway point uh, if you're measuring from the curb. So it falls a little to the curb side of the midpoint of that tree well, and it cuts about the same line through the lamppost, and it's about five bricks in. Uh, and so the, that's where the sidewalk, or rather the uh, ramp would meet the sidewalk. Uh, and then... This is the last of the temporary installations from COVID relief. And so um, we want to, we want this item to move quickly. Uh, I can say that the short of the umbrellas, uh, the applicant has a building permit waiting at the building department, both approved by building and public work. So really it's just waiting for planning approval. So if approved tonight, we could issue uh, an approval tomorrow with an alternate umbrella. But we want to, encourage this installation in the next 30 days and add a condition that the temporary deck be removed in 30 days from this meeting, which would be August 19th. So with the alternate umbrellas and bases, we're recommending approval and with the updated condition. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, we have one more before we open it up to the I have a question. Um, how does... Um, it work with the size of the deck, like going across, like two other businesses. Has there been? Um, I, I don't know what the background rule is around that. Um, you know, is it allowed to be just in front, or are they allowed to extend it in front of the business with approval of the other businesses, or how does that decision get made? So the, the yeah, the city has some discretion uh, if there is an overlap. So that, yeah, the the way the code reads is that. Uh, the priority is to have parking spaces that are directly in front of the business. With this business, there's about four to five feet that uh, encroach onto the other business. Uh, also, uh, hand in hand with, with that code answer is there was a lottery. And so this business uh, applied for two parking spaces and there was no competition for those two parking spaces. And there has been any feedback from those other businesses that they have any issue because it's what they're now, right? The prototype umbrellas have lighting in them. No. Um, what What is the the steel flooring plate? I'm having trouble find um, locating that on the schematic. It's on. It's listed on the uh, L one point two. L one point two at the lower right of the sheet. Yeah, it's, it's, it's listing steel flooring plate, and I'm just looking around to see where that's put on the deck. Or Oh, that, that runs along the, the gutter line. So that plate is about eight inches wide. Gotcha. And it spans the, the gutter to allow Drain. storm drainage below. Okay, thank you. That's all. Okay. Um, so now we will open the public hearing on this item. Is there anyone here in the audience 
for the applicant who would like to speak. Seeing no one, is there anyone on Zoom who would like to speak on this item? We have no participants with their hand raised. Okay, so we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. And I, I would just like to see the cut through that you have that showed the problem with the human face. Because it, it does bother me that we're encroaching on the sidewalk because, you know, we'd sort of be setting a precedent for everyone to, to do that. Um, so I want to make certain that there are no other options that could be used to make it possible for their ramp to not encroach on the sidewalk. And I'll confess I'm not a building person. Maybe Commissioner Jensen can help us if he can use his building expertise. But um, it, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of other options for them in, unless they were to encroach into their five by five circle. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't seem. So does this mean that every ramp is going to encroach on the sidewalk and all of these dining decks since they can't encroach in? Because they can only be eight feet wide in the parallel parking spaces. This is the only one that we know of that needs this. Um, we, you know, the other deck that's approved is at the Sausage Work, and their road crown is much shallower. And they have, they're able to make up the, the rise in the ramp just over a span of the deck. But they don't have to have a five foot clear space at the end of the ramp. I mean, that's what I was hearing. This, the, the deck platform has to be built a couple of inches up above the curb right. in order to meet the grade as it's sloping up in the center of the road. And most of the other conditions won't, won't, most of the other streets don't have this condition where they can encroach. Right, I guess my question is what I was hearing was to meet the ADA requirement they have to have five feet clear at the end of their ramp. And if that is the case, then there's no way on an eight-foot project you wouldn't have the ramp encroaching on the sidewalk. Is my math wrong? Or maybe I'm so the, the five-foot landing is correct. All, they all have to have that for the ADA. But due to the slope here, because the crown of the street is... So I, and you, you can't go beyond a certain slope for the ramp. That's why it's extending out into the sidewalk where on San Jose Avenue, we don't have the same issue. So in the, uh, the design, the building permit that came in for the prototype, it does all fit within the deck as it should uh, with the five foot landing inside the deck. But this is a unique circumstance due to the street. And if you'd like, we can add that to the findings that would, you know, so that we're not setting a precedent that there's a, reason for why we're allowing this onto the sidewalk and we can also elaborate that there's a tree well um, and a light post so it's not creating a new impediment on this you know um, we could make we could buff up our findings if you'd like um, I th I think this is a really nice presentation and um, I I see what you're saying about the encroachment, but the um, I, I feel like the, the lamppost and the tree kind of provide enough, you know, encroachment around it to where it doesn't seem to be, you know, in and of itself. Um, but I don't have a problem with it all. I think it's a really nice presentation, and I think it'll complement that whole sidewalk. I was saying maybe if we encourage. I'm sorry, if we can encourage them, would there be, I mean, that would be something that you could walk into pretty easy. I mean, could they put a, a planter at the, at that two, at the each side of the ramp, just so it'd be more of a visual thing than just a tube or, or the ramp I coming down? they are proposing to put oh, do they? I'm sorry. on either side. I, I was looking at that. Okay. Because that's what the C is. Oh, sorry. Is that? Okay. Uh, I 
I would move approval. <laughs> Can we do that? <laughs> sure. Is there a second? I'll second. Oh. I'll second. Can I ask for a clarification? Would you like to move approval with um, expanded findings or as is? Um, I'd move approval with the expanded findings as just to say that this, um, with whatever, however you want to word it, but saying that the encroachment is contextual because of the crown. Well, uh, when you expanded findings, you mean the umbrella? What does that mean? Oh. The umbrella. oh, I'm sorry. So the, the findings, I w yeah, so I guess the findings and then the added um, conditions, is that, Brian, do you want to pull it back the word condition? It's, it's not a condition, it's just recommendation that we select from the prototype. I, I actually don't have a problem with that umbrella. That could, I mean, I would move, is there any, what was the specific reason you, you guys didn't like the umbrella? The number one is that it's nine feet wide on oh, an eight foot deck. Gotcha. <laughs> so we can, not a bicyclist, but checks into the traffic mm -hmm. at, at Capitol Avenue at that spot is very, a very crowded and b very wide. Understood. I think they need to keep it an eight foot diameter that sits on top of that. Save eyes. And I just want to be sensitive just to like the other applicant who has already probably purchased the stuff in alignment that we have sort of standard size and deal to make. back for clarification. Yeah. Okay. So your motion is to approve it yeah. with the uh, modification of the umbrella mm -hmm. and the added findings related to why the restraint is allowed. Yes. And our second is happy with all of that. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so now we can have a roll call vote. Chair Westman. Uh, I'm actually going to vote no. And only because I have consistently said I didn't think that Capitola Avenue was the appropriate place for uh, us to have sidewalk dining. Vice Chair Christensen. I'm voting yes. Ch uh, Commissioner Esty. Aye. Commissioner Jensen. Aye. Okay, so the motion passes. Um, our next item is 103 Kennedy Drive. And it's a design permit and conditional use permit amendment to convert parking spaces to an outdoor tasting area, bicycle parking, and mobile food vending more than four times per year. Yep. Well, thank you again. And I'll be doing this presentation as well. So this is Sante Darius at 103 Kennedy Drive. Uh, I've got an aerial site plan for you. Here, and I'll note that there is another building on the property at 200 Kennedy uh, that does play into uh, the parking calculation, uh, which is the primary zoning measurable that we took a look at uh, with this permit. So I'm um, just going to get right into uh, how the zoning ordinance uh, allocates demand for parking is an assessment of by use and square footage. So we did a takeoff and um, looked at the interior use of the Sante Darius facility, so 799 square feet of tasting, uh, and then the remainder of the first floor is dedicated to custom manufacturing, and then there's a mezzanine level that is uh, all part of the same continuous use in the interior tasting. Um, zooming out to the proposed tasting area, this is the outdoor tasting area, 575 square feet, and then the 200 Kennedy Building, uh, 4,800 square foot warehouse. And then we've got uh, a little table at the bottom right that tallies it all up uh, as the zoning ordinance prescribes various ratios to these different uses. And uh, 30 parking spaces provided and 30 would be required. Um, in doing a little bit of uh, cross-checking with some aerial photos, I realized uh, just prior to the meeting that, that the accessible parking spaces actually weren't counted. So there's actually two additional parking spaces available on the property. Um, as well, uh, I wanted to note that um, the applicant 
I worked directly with the city to provide off-shoulder parking, a couple of improvements along Kennedy Drive highlighted in orange here. This provided a public parking facility for the entire area, uh, 16 parking spaces. And this project was completed in 2016 uh, in cooperation with the city. Uh, I think the, the business had some success initially that was uh, um, maybe a little bit unexpected and so they had a bit of a parking issue at this facility, and they were a good partner and worked with the city on providing parking here. Um, I think there isn't such a demand for parking anymore, and we haven't had any complaints uh, in, in several years about parking in the area. So looking at uh, back to the facility, uh, purple is the Sante Adarius building. Um, the green is the patio tasting. Uh, part of the request is to have mobile food vending more than six times per year, which requires a use permit modification. Uh, the food trucks would, would pull in uh, and park basically in front of the patio and tasting area near the trash enclosure. The program includes uh, hours of 9 to 8 p.m. with an option for six times a year on Fridays and Saturdays to be open till 10. Uh, this is uh, a self-serve, so there's there would be no wait staff uh, this is not a conversion to a restaurant. It's really um, just a self-serve, and there would be no table service, but it would be managed, uh, and the vendors would be managed by permanent on-site staff. And there are two public restrooms available at the interior. And uh, this originally was part of uh, COVID relief for this uh, facility, and so this installation is there now. Exterior being uh, reclaimed wood planters and barrels is the, the primary exterior design. And then at the interior, string lights, uh, umbrellas, and picnic tables. And so we are recommending approval of this application as well. I'd be happy to take questions. Um, can you go indicate where the bicycle parking is? And are they expanding that, or is that? Over there to the left? It's, it's bolted into this last parking space here, and it's nine spaces. Is there any drainage concern for the having the, you know, when? Yeah, so this is just going to sit on top of the parking lot paving, so there were no drainage. In okay. That. Okay. okay. Um, open it to the public. We'll open this up to the public. Anybody in the audience who would like to come and address us? Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, staff. My name is Adair Paterno. I am the owner of the business on Darius at 103 Kennedy. Um, when we first leased the space 12 years ago, we only had one of the units. Now we have all five of the units, so basically just a brewery in that location. Um, and the patio that we built um, post, you know, during the COVID relief period has really been instrumental in keeping us going and keeping us alive. Um, but now it's, it's become something that people expect. I mean, we have beautiful weather here. We all like to sit outside. Um, I have fundraisers out there for the shelter, for the SBCA and other organizations. Um, and it's just become a really great community gathering space. Um, so we would love to be able to keep it. Uh, and I'm, I'm welcome to answer any questions that you might have. I'm John McCoy, the uh, property owner since 1994 and technically the holder of the master use permit for the property. And uh, again, I am relieved to have one very responsible tenant instead of a, a mix of five different tenants that we started with on the property. And in general, the neighborhood in 1994 was not the greatest. And through cooperation with um, Capitola Police earlier on in the, in the years, and certainly the residents are um, taking great pride in the residential area and along with their owner and management of the residential park that we share the access with, um, they're doing a great job at making this part of the neighborhood a, a viable um, and enjoyable part of the community. And I judge the 
the strength of the community by watching who's there. And we've seen a, a mix of, instead of people in the old times dumping loads of things, you know, on the side because they thought nobody was there, we all watch now and we see a lot of um, families bicycling, kids, uh, people taking their morning walks through there, walking their dogs, and uh, it's, it's changed a lot. And uh, I'm proud of everyone who has contributed to that. So as far as technical knowledge about drainage or things, I know all of that. So if you have specific questions, I'll chime in. Thank you. So I, I do have one question. Are you planning on having live music outdoors? No, that's not the current plan. If we did want to have live music, we would seek a permit um, to do that if that were possible. But we typically don't have any any music outside. There's music indoors, but not outside. It's quiet. Right, because there are residents actually fairly close to you. Correct. So that could be an issue. OK, thank you. Um, been to your place many times. Really enjoy it. What is this? Uh, what does this increase the occupancy, allowable occupancy? Oh, goodness. Um, it the uh, there are eight picnic tables outside that seat probably six of them seat six each um, and the other ones seat less people because they're ADA accessible picnic tables so they have they only have two little seats on them where you can wheel up a wheelchair um, so those probably seat, only seat four people so it'd be eight um, like 50 50 people probably have you ever had any issues with the mobile home Home park next door whoever. not that I'm aware of if they have concerns they haven't brought them to my attention Thanks. You're welcome good evening. good evening my name is Manuel Vieira and the comment you and hello to the Planning Commission um, you're talking about the ownership or the management of the mobile home park you got them right here. Mm -hmm. You're just a neighbor. And I want to run some, some, some key points here. When this, this property was being built, uh, there was conditional use permit. Uh, uh, permit means that it doesn't have a right to change what they're asking for. There was a condition when they, when they, when they built the building, uh, Pelican Mine, my neighbor was there. All the alcohol must be maintained inside the property. Okay, I understand COVID, so that's why you haven't heard many complaints from, from us. Um, and it, if anyone was around back in the day when it was being built, it was a big controversial going on. The council should deny the permit because of the harm it would cause the community with seniors, kids that live less than 50 feet away. This area is residential and commercial allowing Pelican Winery to operate alcohol consumption at this entrance to the residents of the mobile home park should, should, not, be, should not happen. The, again, the mobile home park is about 50 feet at the max to the, close, to the first residence that has families and little children. Um, the mobile home park has families, older folks, already has been exposed to public drunkenness that have left that property. Um, they have, they have um, the police department has been out there for people um, intoxication being arrested that hit one of the, hit a couple of mobile homes. Uh, people that are trying to find the place and have a mishap of, uh, I think a lady's cat and um, a few other instances during the year since they, since they started. Um, and by doing this outside patio, you're enhancing the situation than what it is. Right now, right now at the time moment because of COVID, you're allowing them outside. I'm waiting to see when you guys can put the, the situation back to the conditional use permit when it was built. In addition, all work and all the, the processing of the wines with barrels and stuff is supposed to be outside. And unfortunately, um, they're not following, following the, the, the permit. So I strongly suggest if you guys could uh, deny this uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you. And you want to write my name here? Uh, okay, yeah, if you uh, mind, put your name down, then okay. we'll get it correctly in a minute. Uh, so is there anyone on anyone else in the public who would like to speak? 
uh, anyone on Zoom? Yes, we have one participant with their hand raised on Zoom. We'll allow Linda to speak. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Linda Vieira, the other owner of Cabrillo Mobile Home Park, which is adjacent to the winery. And I am against um, the conditional use permit being requested by the winery. Um, it is, as previously stated, very close to the all age mobile home park where there are families and seniors. Um, there is a concern about the people walking through the residential area uh, following their uh, visit to the winery. Um, and again, it's a private property, so we want to discourage any additional trespassing that has and could occur. And um, it's a the detriment to the community and to our mobile home park far outweighs any economic benefit, I believe, that can be derived from the winery for this additional proposed use. So I recommend that the Planning Commission decline the requested conditional use permit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone else on Zoom? Okay. No. With that, we will close the public hearing and we will bring it back to the commission. Um, I, I will say that I was actually here in 1994 when um, this was originally approved. And I do think that um, along with, you know, the outdoor dining that we're doing in the village, which was not allowed in 1994, um, we are going through somewhat of a change in, you know, the type of dining and entertainment that, that people want. And um, uh, they're not in violation of their prior use permit, what they're in, because they're here applying for a modification to that use permit to be able to do uh, what they're proposing to do tonight. Uh, so hear from someone else after that. <laughs> um, uh, has there been any um, uh, data or research uh, taken from their concerns from the police department? Um, do we have any uh, issues that have been noted um, or? Yeah, I, I, in the plan review I did talk to the police captain. I didn't, they didn't have any concern with I didn't ask them specifically about the mobile home, but um, I mean, I, I don't think there's any issue with the facility as it's been operated for that long. There were no, no calls for that. No additional calls for service before when they had no outdoor dining compared to what they have now? I don't, I don't really have any questions per se. I, I, I think that, I mean, the outdoor dining seems to enhance the overall area. And it, it I mean, but I mean, it, as it was said, cyclists and people coming around there, it's just proper regulation and management, which I'm hearing seems to be sufficient. Um, I guess, yeah, well, I was concerned about the noise aspects and, and um, Mr. Veer has, this is your comments as well, about the access to their private property. But my recollection is there are gates on Turner Lane for certain and also on Rosedale Avenue. I don't know if you looked at that. to Make sure, uh, certainly cars can't go through. So I remember that, but I think I got around it on my bike. I can't remember. But if not, is there something we could do to make it more or clear that you do not drink at San Andreas and wander onto this private property. We could collectively work at it. It seems like, um, you know, there, there, I agree with you about the noise. So, you know, for me, I would like to see there be an actual condition that says they're not going to have any live music outdoors without getting an entertainment permit for a special event. And I think it would be appropriate to put a condition in there that um, they put up uh, some signage 
um, you know, asking their customers not to walk through the mobile home park, that that is private property. Um, because uh, I think for a lot of people who do walk through there, they're unaware that that's not something that's there for you to do. So if, if we could do those two things. Yeah, uh, that would be. I, th I think that would help the mobile home park because noise would be my main concern. Parking is really not an issue because they have their own parking here at the business. Yeah, I'm with those two conditions. I would, I would approve. I would move approval for this. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah, I will second the motion with the two additional conditions. Okay, uh, can we have a roll call vote? Chair Westman. Yes. Vice Chair Christensen. Yes. Commissioner Esty. Aye. Commissioner Jensen. Yes. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. So I, I have a question because I got a little confused at the beginning of the meeting because on the agenda I just printed out from the city's website, we had uh, 836 Bay Avenue as the first item on our consent calendar. And you were requesting that we continue that item, but it wasn't on the green agenda that was on the dais. So um, do we need to take some action on 820, 836 Bay Avenue since it was on the agenda that was on the city's website? My, my understanding is that we need to re-notice for that item because we need to add a variance to the original noticing. So I think it would be... So you just took it off the agenda since you're going to re-notice it again. Yeah, it, it should have been on the uh, full yeah. packet, but uh, we were asking that this item be yeah, continued. I this out this afternoon from your website, <laughs> and it had that on there. So uh, just in case anyone in the public was interested, that item was taken off the agenda, and we'll be coming back on a future agenda, and that's it. 836 Bay Avenue, which I believe is the uh, Chevron station. Yes. Okay. Um, so now we are at the point on our agenda for a director's report. There's one more item. Um, one more. Oh, one more, the mall. Okay, so we do have one more. 1855 41st Avenue. And it is a conditional use permit to allow Capitola Mall food court restaurants to sell beer and wine within the designated food court area. Um, staff report? Thank you and good evening. Um, as you see there, it's another alcohol-related application. Uh, specifically, this uh, application is proposing a conditional use permit to allow the sale and consumption of beer and wine at the uh, Capitol Mall food courts uh, for the tenants there to uh, sell it. Uh, the permit would designate the food court as a shared premises for alcohol consumption and the property is located within the Regional Commercial Zoning District in the Capitola Commercial Corridor. This is as the uh, frontage appears today on Clare Street. That enters straight into the food court there. And this is a view of the food court as uh, seen from just inside that entrance. And right here we have uh, from the opposing side, from inside the mall in the retail area. I just want to note really quick that you can see in the center right here, there's a directory sign. And just for future reference, when we look at the site plan, that is the sort of demising line between what we're going to be calling the food court area. So you can see it here. The directory sign is right in between these dots. So the Capitol Mall Food Court common area is approximately 7,000 square feet. 
and contains 11 tenant suites. The court can be accessed directly from the mall parking area as well as the larger mall interior. The yellow zone on the site plan you can see above indicates the shared premises and the green area indicates all the uh, eligible tenant suites within the food court. Right here's a breakdown of those tenant suites themselves. There's a few that are grayed out as those ones are not among the eligible. So although there are 11 tenant suites in the larger food court area, only eight would be eligible for alcohol sales. Two of them are located on the periphery of the food court as we saw before and are not included. Uh, they're outside of that, that dividing line. And the third space is not uh, leased to the public. Those three spaces that I just mentioned are indicated here. There's small red lines leading to them. But when evaluating conditional use permits, the Planning Commission must consider the characteristics of the proposed use. And to this end, the Commission may also attach conditions of approval to the use permit. The proposed CUP for alcohol will not modify the structure and is not considered an intensification in terms of parking. Court is already configured as a shared eating premises with uh, and requires minimal alteration, which the applicant has limited to just signage. In 2021, planning and police staff met the applicant on site on a preliminary basis to discuss and uh, assess the uh, possible alcohol sales in the future there. Uh, at, after which, uh, 2023, we had the application submitted. Uh, but following that visit, Staff provided the applicant with an outline of possible conditions and limitations that would satisfy uh, their primary considerations, which evolved, involved, um, just as an overview, limiting alcohol consumption premises to a controllable area, clearly defining the shared premises for the patrons themselves, and the ability to identify and monitor alcoholic beverages uh, after point of sale. Staff and the applicant uh, subsequently incorporated into these uh, these measures into the business management plan, the conditions of approval, and the chief of police's letter of support. So just a, a consolidation here of the management plan. It includes required employee training for restaurants selling alcohol, unique beverage containers for alcohol, uh, which can be distinguished from non-alcoholic beverages. Increased monitoring of the food court by security staff in coordination with security staff and the businesses themselves. The businesses would also be uh, taking a part in monitoring of the after point of sale of the alcohol. Added security shifts for forecasted peak customer activity and signage defining the boundaries for patrons, which I'll get into now. There's a, a key on the side here, and below that, there's a, a demonstration of what the permanent stickers could look like. There will be a combination of, of permanent stickers affixed to the entrance doors, as well as to the entrances to the bathroom hallway, um, just next to the entrance, as well as in, when you're leading into the retail area. So they'll have them spread across there. I believe we also included a condition to have them on whenever there's a French door to the outside, because there's several door sets that they'd be at least on one of those doors. <clears throat> prior to obtain or prior to any alcohol sales, a planning commission, or sorry, a planning staff inspection is also required uh, to ensure that the signage is in place. Each business wishing to utilize the shared premises seating areas for alcohol must also apply for an ABC license and meet all of the requirements shown above. With the combination of the management plan and the conditions of approval, uh, the chief of police, Andy Daly, uh, provided a letter of support for the application. I would like to note, lastly, though, that the uh, after the approval, if there was an approval tonight, that this would not require any subsequent planning commission review as, as written and conditioned. So, this would simply be a, a ministerial process with planning staff and coordination with the police department.
And with that, staff recommends the approval of the application uh, based on the findings and conditions of approval. Are there any questions? I'm available. Is the floor will be pulled over to have those closed. So the two go sales confuses me a little bit. So they Season opening the container, right? No. So, we prevent that? so the ABC actually gives some, uh, there's some flexibility with how a, a Type 41, which is likely the only license that would be applicable here, uh, can be utilized. Um, they can be, they can actually be for on and off sale, but we, if both are allowed, they're actually seen as two different. Uh, uses so if if you buy alcohol for on sale consumption, the restaurants would actually open that container for you, and and in this case, likely pour it into a separate container. From that point on, from the point of those containers being opened, they cannot leave the premises, so they must be discarded or consumed on site. If it's sold for off site consumption, it cannot be opened on site; it has to be taken home. So you can't open it outside. You can't open it. Inside, if you open it inside, they'll have to take it from you. This is pretty standard for a lot of uh, bars and, and, and even restaurants. Some places are, are limited by condition so that they can't do uh, off-site sale. And some places, just by simplicity, might also only do on-site sale. The Planning Commission could uh, add a condition dictating that this is only for on-site consumption, but we did not include a condition at this time. Was there a previously previously a, a um, license for the food court in the back of the pa in the past year? An ABC license for this? I, you know, I'm not aware of there ever being any individual license, uh, alcohol licenses for tenants of the food court. There have been and are alcohol licenses in the other parts of the mall. Um, for the, the independent restaurants. Thank you. And just to add to the on-site and off-site, we were, in considering this, we are thinking about Target, and you can go into Target and buy beer and wine and for consumption off-site. And so where it's in such close proximity, we, we thought, why, why limit it in this location when they can just go to Target? Yeah. <laughs> we do also have the... Uh, general manager of the, the mall here today with us. Okay, so we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to us? <laughs> Brian Kirk, uh, general manager. Uh, to answer your question, Jerry, there were tenants I found out much before my time, but our operations manager has been on site for 40 plus years and said that they did have beer and wine sales, I believe about 15 years ago. Pulled up some old photos of the menu. so I. The Chinese restaurant, and then there was a barbecue place that was just open. And then as the tenant mix changed, went away, there was no need for it as hot dog on a stick. Dairy Queen, they don't sell that, and then it kind of just faded off. So, um, but otherwise, thanks for reviewing. I think this offering will allow the tenants to increase uh, their menu items, allow them to expand their sales, hopefully bring in new foot traffic, help the overall health of the mall. And then with our security, we've got CCTV cameras, on-site security, great cooperation with PD. We're not really concerned with the safety. I think we'll be able to handle it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone on Zoom who would like to speak on this item? No, we do not. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Would anybody like to make any comments or ask any questions? No comments. I, I don't either. I mean, you go to lots of malls, and they have all sorts of restaurants in the malls that are selling beer and wine. And as um, Katie mentioned, you could just go into Target and buy it as well. So I, I don't see any concern. So we need a motion and a second. I would move approval. And I also want to say that I think that um, this kind of goes along with the other types, like downtown Santa Cruz. They have the... Um, what it's called. It's a communal eating area, food court. Mm -hmm. They have all the different restaurants and little bars, and I just think it's a really great step in the right direction to keep people frequenting the mall. 
and um, bringing community there and making it, you know, in whatever direction the mall is going to go, I, I'm, I'm for it. So I move approval. <laughs> um, I'll second. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Do we want to do a roll call vote? Chair Westman. Yes. Vice Chair Christensen. Yes. Commissioner Esty. Aye. Commissioner Jensen. One when, when thing I was wondering, um, well, uh, Brian's here. Could you just, can you give a quick overview just of the mall? Um, I've been there recently, um, like of the vacancy rates or what you're seeing and kind of where you're seeing the, the mall at the present time. Sure, yeah. You know? Just to expand on the mall, we've got obviously unknown timeline with the new developments, but we're just trying to bring in lots of local businesses, homegrown, uh, trying to treat it like a community marketplace to help incubate uh, small businesses. So we've added about about a dozen businesses in the last year that we're still expanding, food court being one of them that was all boarded up basically during COVID. So we're slowly bringing that all down, trying to get it to full occupancy. And then, you know, only helps the city, tax revenue, helps the local business owners. And so, you know, people have been seeing it, they come in, and so hopefully this will help us drive in more foot traffic. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, okay, now it's time for the director's report. I think I got it right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've got a couple items for you tonight. Um, first, I wanted to mention the August 17th meeting. We have definitely two items, probably three. Um, 206 Hollister is going to be before you with a single family home in ADU, as well as 836 Bay Avenue, which is the Chevron um, for the canopy. And then as long as everyone is here, we'd like to bring forth the discussion on the color board and materials. So um, at that meeting, I will not be present. Um, I have an, another obligation. So Brian will be in very good hands with senior planner, Brian Freelick. Um, another update is we are going to be modifying what our agenda looks like. We're going to kind of uh, base it on what you see at city council so that the recommendation is right there in the agenda. I think it's a friendlier, um, way to present it to the public so they know where you know where staff is at with the application and whether or not it just makes it easier than going through all the reports um so we'll be updating our agenda i also there was a question that came in earlier about the monty fireworks those are not happening this year because of the wharf and the it's just very complicated along our very small beach front um, and then I have some good news. I heard from uh, HCD this week that they're ready to provide me with initial comments. So I think it's, so we, we turned this in about two and a half weeks ago and um, they've got a planner that Veronica's worked with a lot in the past and um, I think they're going on leave shortly. So they're trying to get this done for us. So they're gonna give us kind of a, a preliminary list. So I plan on bringing this back to you sooner rather than later to work out the preliminary list because we'll be able to resubmit that during this initial 90 day period and hopefully get our list even smaller. I'm really worried about Builder's Remedy and we're gonna do our best to try to get this accomplished before the end of the year. So, okay. And um, lastly, continue to save the date for October 19th for that housing element special meeting. And that's all I have for you this evening. Thank you. Okay, any commission comments? Nope. Uh, tonight. Okay, I just had one brief and I was gonna let you know that I will not be here on September 7th, but you'll be, Courtney will do a fabulous job running the meeting. Um, I'm actually gonna be out of the country on that day. Be here for the other meeting. All right, uh, I think we're ready to adjourn. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.